The Chinese Large Modular Space Station is a planned space station to be placed in low Earth orbit. The planned Chinese space station will be roughly one-fifth the mass of the International Space Station and about the size of the decommissioned Russian Mir space station. The Chinese station is expected to have a mass between 80 to 100 metric tons. Operations will be controlled from the Beijing Aerospace Command and Control Center in China. The planned launch date of the core module, the Tianhe-1 Harmony of the Heavens, is 2020. In 2017, the Chinese launched the Tianzhou-1 Heavenly Vessel cargo spaceship, which is based on the Tiangong-1 and 2 space laboratories. Topic overview The construction of the station will manifest the third phase of the Tiangong program. It builds on the experience gained from its precursors, Tiangong-1 and Tiangong-2. Chinese leaders hope that research conducted on the station will improve researchers' ability to conduct science experiments in space, beyond the duration offered by China's existing space laboratories. Topic origin of name Deng Xiaoping decided that the names used in the space program, previously all chosen from the revolutionary history of the PRC, would be replaced with mystical religious ones. Thus, the new Long March carrier rockets were renamed Divine Arrow, Shane Jian Space Capsule Divine Vessel, Shane Zhou Space Shuttle Divine Dragon, Shane Long Land Based High Power Laser Divine Light, Shane Guang and Supercomputer Divine Might, Shane Wei. These poetic names continue as the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth Chinese lunar probes are called Chang'e after the moon goddess. The name Tiangong means Heavenly Palace. Across the PRC the launch of Tiangong-1 inspired a variety of feelings, including love poetry. Within the PRC, the rendezvous of space vehicles is compared to the reunion of the cowherd and the weaver girl, Niolang Chinese, Niu Lang and Jinu Chinese, Jinu lovers separated by the Milky Way which was scratched there by an angry goddess. Only on the night of sevens, over a bridge made from all of the sympathetic magpies in the world, the lovers may meet. The remainder of the year, Jinu sits on the banks of the Milky Way River with two of her children and weaves the clouds, with Nielang on the other side. Wang Wenbao, director of the CMSE, told a news conference in 2011, Considering past achievements and the bright future, we feel the manned space program should have a more vivid symbol, and that the future space station should carry a resounding and encouraging name. We now feel that the public should be involved in the names and symbols, as this major project will enhance national prestige and strengthen the national sense of cohesion and pride. Imagery of the Chinese space program has been used by the party government to strengthen its position and promote patriotism since the late 1950s and early 1960s. On October 31, 2013, China Manned Space Engineering announced the new names for the whole program. The precursor space labs would be called Tian Gong Chinese, Tian Gong Chinese. Tian Gong Pinyin, Tian Gong, literally, Heavenly Palace, Code TG. Tian Gong 1 launched in 2011. Tian Gong 2 launched in 2016. The cargo transport spacecraft would be called Tianzhou, Chinese, Tianzhou Pinyin, Tianzhou, literally, Heavenly Ship, Code TZ. The first Tianzhou successfully launched in 2017. The modular space station core module would be called Tianhe, Chinese, Tianhe Pinyin, Tianhe, literally, Harmony of the Heavens, code TH. Launch planned for 2020. The modular space station experiment module I would be called Wenchen, Chinese, Wentian Chinese, Wentian Pinyin, Wentian, literally, Quest for the Heavens, code WT. Launch planned for 2021. The Modular Space Station Experiment Module 2 would be called Mengtian Chinese, Mengtian Chinese, Mengtian Pinyin, Mengtian, literally, Dreaming of the Heavens, Code Mount. Launch plan for 2022, the Separated Space Telescope Module would be called Zunshan Chinese, Xuantian Pinyin, Xuantian, literally, Heavenly Cruiser, Code XT, Telescope, receiving the previously intended name for the Experiment Module 2. Topic. Structure The CSS will be a third-generation, modular space station. First-generation space stations, such as early Salyut, Almaz, and Skylab, were single-piece stations and not designed for resupply. Second-generation Salyut 6 and 7, and Tiangong 1 and 2 stations, are designed for mid-mission resupply. Third-generation stations such as Mir, the International Space Station, OPSEK and the CSS are modular space stations, assembled on orbit from pieces launched separately. 
Modularized design methods can greatly improve reliability, reduce costs, shorten development cycle, and meet diversified task requirements. Topic: Technology exchanges. The assembly method of the station can be compared with the Soviet Russian Mir space station and the Russian orbital segment of the International Space Station. If the station is constructed, China will be the second nation to develop and use automatic rendezvous and docking for modular space station construction. Shenzhou spacecraft and space stations use a domestically made docking mechanism similar to, or compatible with, the Russian designed APAS docking adapter. During the cordial Sino Soviet relations of the 1950s, the USSR engaged in a cooperative technology transfer program with the PRC under which they taught Chinese students and provided the fledgling program with a sample R 2 rocket. The first Chinese missile was built in 1958, reverse engineered from the Soviet R 2, itself an upgraded version of the German V 2 rocket. But when Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev was denounced as revisionist by Mao, the friendly relationship between the two countries turned to confrontation. As a consequence, all Soviet technological assistance was abruptly withdrawn after the 1960 Sino-Soviet split. Development of the Long March rocket series allowed the PRC to initiate a commercial launch program in 1985, which has since launched over 30 foreign satellites, primarily for European and Asian interests. In 1994, Russia sold some of its advanced aviation and space technology to the Chinese. In 1995 a deal was signed between the two countries for the transfer of Russian Soyuz spacecraft technology to China. Included in the agreement was training, provision of Soyuz capsules, life support systems, docking systems, and spacesuits. In 1996 two Chinese astronauts, Wu Jia and Li Qinglong, began training at the Yuri Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center in Russia. After training, these men returned to China and proceeded to train other Chinese astronauts at sites near Beijing and Jukon. The hardware and information sold by the Russians led to modifications of the original Phase I spacecraft, eventually called Shenzhou, which loosely translated means, "...divine vessel." New launch facilities were built at the Jukon launch site in Inner Mongolia, and in the spring of 1998 a mock-up of the Long March 2F launch vehicle with Shenzhou spacecraft was rolled out for integration and facility tests. A representative of the Chinese manned space program stated that around 2000, China and Russia were engaged in technological exchanges regarding the development of a docking mechanism. Deputy Chief Designer, Huang Weifen, stated that near the end of 2009, the Chinese agency began to train astronauts on how to dock spacecraft. Topic modules The core cabin module provides life support and living quarters for three crew members, and provides guidance, navigation, and orientation control for the station. The module also provides the station's power, propulsion, and life support systems. The module consists of three sections, living quarters, service section and a docking hub. The living quarters will contain a kitchen and toilet, fire control equipment, atmospheric processing and control equipment, computers, scientific apparatus, communications equipment to see and hear ground control in Beijing, and other equipment. In 2018 full-scale mock-up of CCM was publicly presented at China International Aviation and Aerospace Exhibition in Zhuhai. The first of two laboratory cabin modules will provide additional navigation avionics, propulsion and orientation control as backup functions for the CCM. Both LCMs will provide a pressurized environment for researchers to conduct science experiments in freefall or microgravity which could not be conducted on Earth for more than a few minutes. Experiments can also be placed on the outside of the modules for exposure to the space environment, cosmic rays, vacuum, and solar winds. Like Mir and the Russian orbital segment of the ISS, the CSS modules will be fully assembled in orbit, in contrast to the U.S. orbital segment of the ISS, which required spacewalking to interconnect cables, piping, and structural elements manually. The axial port of the LCMs will be fitted with rendezvous equipment and will first dock to the axial port of the CCM. A mechanical arm similar to the Russian Lyapa arm used on the Mir space station will then move the module to a radial port of the CCM. Topic construction timeframes In 2011, the space station was planned to be assembled during 2020 to 2022. By 2013, the space station's core module was planned to be launched earlier, in 2018, followed by the first laboratory module in 2020, and a second in 2022. 
By 2018 this had slipped to 2020 to 2023. Topic systems Topic Electrical Electrical power is provided by two steerable solar power arrays on each module, which use photovoltaic cells to convert sunlight into electricity. Energy is stored to power the station when it passes into the Earth's shadow. Resupply ships will replenish fuel for the station's propulsion engines for station keeping, to counter the effects of atmospheric drag. Topic docking Foreign sources have stated that the docking mechanism strongly resembles APAS-89, APAS-95, with one American source going as far as to call it a clone. There have been contradictory claims on the compatibility of the Chinese system with both current and future docking mechanisms on the ISS. Topic experiments The programmed experiment equipment for the three modules as of June 2016 are, Space Life Sciences and Biotechnology Ecology Science Experiment Rack Biotechnology Experiment Rack Science Glove Box and Refrigerator Rack Microgravity Fluid Physics and Combustion Fluids Physics Experiment Rack Two-Phase System Experiment Rack Combustion Experiment Rack Material Science in Space Material Furnace Experiment Rack MFER Container Less Material Experiment Rack CMER Fundamental Physics in Microgravity Cold Atom Experiment Rack CAER High Precision Time Frequency Rack HTFR Multipurpose Facilities High Microgravity Level Rack HMGR Varying Gravity Experiment Rack VGER Modularized Experiment Rack Rack Topic Resupply The station will be resupplied by manned spacecraft and robot cargo ships. Topic Shenzhou The Shenzhou is designed primarily to carry crew into orbit. It consists of three modules, a forward orbital module, Gui Dao Kang used by crew as working and living space, a re-entry module Fan Wei Kang in the middle, which removes all unnecessary equipment making the simplest and thereby safest return to Earth, and an aft service module, Tui Jin Kang which contains engines, propellants, guidance and orientation control, and cooling. Anything placed in the orbital or service modules does not require heat shielding, and this increases the space available in the spacecraft without increasing weight as much as it would if those modules were also able to withstand re-entry. Thus both Soyuz and Shenzhou have more living area with less weight than the Apollo CSM. The mass of the ship is around 8,000 kg 8.0 t, 18,000 pounds, 8.8 .8 short tons, and it is 9.25 meters 30.3 feet long. The maximum diameter of the modules is 2.80 meters, 9 feet 2 in. With solar panels extended, the station is 17.00 meters, 55.77 feet across until Shenzhou 8. The orbital module of the Shenzhou was equipped with its own propulsion, solar power, and control systems, allowing autonomous flight. It was possible for Shenzhou to leave an orbital module in orbit for redocking with a later spacecraft, something which the Soyuz cannot do, since the only hatch between orbital and re-entry modules is a part of re-entry module, and the orbital module is depressurized after separation. In the future it might be possible for the orbital modules to be left attached to the station as additional station modules. Small modules for the ISS are launched by Soyuz spacecraft in this way. In unmanned test flights, the orbital module of each Shenzhou was left functioning on orbit for several days after the return of the re-entry modules, and the Shenzhou 5 orbital module continued to operate for six months after launch. Topic Tianzhou Tianzhou heavenly vessel, a modified derivative of the Tiangong-1 spacecraft, will be used as robotic cargo spacecraft to resupply this station. The launch mass of Tianzhou is expected to be around 13,000 kg with a payload of around 6,000 kg. Launch, rendezvous and docking shall be fully autonomous, with mission control and crew used in override or monitoring roles. This system becomes very reliable with standardizations that provide significant cost benefits in repetitive routine operations. An automated approach could allow assembly of modules orbiting other worlds prior to manned missions. Topic safety topic Orbital debris The CSS will be operated in low Earth orbit, 340 to 450 km above the Earth at an orbital inclination of 42 to 43 degrees, in the center of the Earth's thermosphere. At this altitude there is a variety of space debris, consisting of many different objects including entire spent rocket stages, dead satellites, explosion fragments, 
including materials from anti-satellite weapon tests 2007 Chinese anti-satellite missile test, paint flakes, slag from solid rocket motors, coolant released by RORSAT nuclear-powered satellites and some clumps remaining from the 750 million small needles from the American military project West Ford. These objects, in addition to natural micrometeoroids, are a significant threat. Large objects could destroy the station, but are less of a threat as their orbits can be predicted. Objects too small to be detected by optical and radar instruments, from approximately 1 cm down to microscopic size, number in the trillions. Despite their small size, some of these objects are still a threat because of their kinetic energy and direction in relation to the station. Spacesuits of spacewalking crew could puncture, causing exposure to vacuum, space debris objects are tracked remotely from the ground, and the station crew can be notified. This allows for a debris avoidance maneuver DAM, to be conducted, which uses thrusters on station to change orbital velocity and altitude, avoiding the debris. DAMs will take place if computational models show the debris will approach within a certain threat distance. Usually the orbit will be raised saving fuel, as the station's orbit must be boosted periodically to counter the effects of atmospheric drag. If a threat from orbital debris is identified too late for a dam to be safely conducted, the station crew close all the hatches aboard the station and retreat into their Shenzhou spacecraft, so that they would be able to evacuate in the event it was damaged by the debris. Micrometeorite shielding is incorporated into the station to protect pressurized sections and critical systems. The type and thickness of these panels varies depending upon their predicted exposure to damage. Radiation Stations in low Earth orbit are partially protected from the space environment by the Earth's magnetic field. From an average distance of about 70,000 km, depending on solar activity, the magnetosphere begins to deflect solar wind around the Earth and space stations in orbit. However, solar flares are still a hazard to the crew, who may receive only a few minutes warning. The crew of the ISS took shelter as a precaution in 2005 in a more heavily shielded part of that station designed for this purpose during the initial proton storm of an X3-class solar flare. But without the limited protection of the Earth's magnetosphere, China's planned manned mission to Mars is especially at risk. Subatomic charged particles, primarily protons from cosmic rays and solar wind, are normally absorbed by the Earth's atmosphere. When they interact in sufficient quantity, their effect becomes visible to the naked eye in a phenomenon called an aurora. Without the protection of the Earth's atmosphere, which absorbs this radiation, station crews are exposed to about 1 millisievert each day, which is about the same as someone would get in a year on Earth, from natural sources. This results in a higher risk of crew members developing cancer. Radiation can penetrate living tissue and damage DNA, cause damage to the chromosomes of lymphocytes. These cells are central to the immune system and so any damage to them could contribute to the lowered immunity experienced by crew. Radiation has also been linked to a higher incidence of cataracts in astronauts. Protective shielding and protective drugs may lower the risks to an acceptable level. The radiation levels experienced on ISS are about five times greater than those experienced by airline passengers and crew. The Earth's electromagnetic field provides almost the same level of protection against solar and other radiation in low Earth orbit as in the stratosphere. Airline passengers, however, experience this level of radiation for no more than 15 hours for the longest intercontinental flights. For example, on a 12-hour flight an airline passenger would experience 0.1 millisievert of radiation, or a rate of 0.2 millisieverts per day, only one-fifth the rate experienced by an astronaut in LEO. <laughs> <laughs> International cooperation Cooperation in the field of manned space flight between the CMSEO and the Italian Space Agency was examined in 2011. Participation in the development of China manned space stations and cooperation with China in the fields such as astronauts' flight and scientific research was discussed. Potential areas and ways for future cooperation in the fields of development of manned space station, space medicine, and space science have also been discussed during the meeting. On the 22nd of February 2017, the China Manned Space Agency (CMSA) and Italian Space Agency signed an agreement to cooperate on long-term human spaceflight activities. 
The consequences of this agreement could be important, considering, on the one hand, the leading position Italy has achieved in the field of human spaceflight with regard to the creation and exploitation of the International Space Station Node 2, Node 3, Columbus, Cupola, Leonardo, Raffaello, Donatello, PMM etc., and, on the other hand, the important human spaceflight program that China is developing, especially with the creation of the Tiangong-3 space station. Topic. End of orbit The station will have a service life of 10 years. Chinese manned spacecraft use deorbital burns to slow their velocity, resulting in their re-entry to the Earth's atmosphere. Vehicles carrying a crew have a heat shield which prevents the vehicle's destruction caused by aerodynamic heating upon contact with the Earth's atmosphere. The CSS has no heat shield, however, small parts of space stations can reach the surface of the Earth, so uninhabited areas will be targeted for de-orbit maneuvers. See also Space Station International Space Station Chinese Space Program Shenzhou Program Shenzhou Spacecraft Topic. References Topic. External links Chinese Space Agency website